Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is Outer Wilds. In today's loop, we will be discussing all of the biological life forms we find in the solar system, as well as signs of life in the ancient past. Outer Wilds has a pretty optimistic take on life in the universe. We literally find life is sustainable on every single planet in the game. A quick thank you to the admin Finn in the Lore Explorer Discord for the video idea. And as always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. Before we get into it, I just want to thank you guys for helping the channel hit a membership milestone. I really appreciate it. We are up to 10 members here on the channel, and if you want to join the growing community of members, you can hit the join button below to join and unlock channel perks instantly. Shameless plug out of the way, this video is going to work by going planet to planet, starting from closest to the sun. You'd think Ember Twin would be void of light due to the heat and solar radiation produced from the sun, but that is not what we find when exploring the planet. Walking around the part of Ember Twin that's at its highest elevation, we find plants sticking out of the ground, almost like a bush, but spread out with long twigs. Some of them even have petals on top of their twigs. This suggests there is at least some liquid in the surface left on Ember Twin and the atmosphere or magnetic field here must still be strong enough to combat the solar winds bombarding the planet. Further exploration confirms this must be true. In one of the caves leading away from the Nomai crash site, we find tons of plants. A large field of grass with flowers and trees poking up all around. The trees here have a unique look with their leaves being in a bulbous shape, which makes them look really cool in my opinion. We find more of those twiggy bushes here as well. The Nomai were actually able to get a lot of these plants to grow underground in their sunless city. And we even find more life deep within the caves of Amber Twin. Almost as soon as we get underground, we find a cactus-like plant. It does have a nice flower on top, but these things are actually pretty big. And their thorns will poke a hole right through your spacesuit, which can kill you if you're slow at patching the hole up. If we head even deeper into Emberton's caves, down to the sand slide, we find that this place seems to be a repository for fossils. The first of them looks a lot like an ammonite. These are ancient squid-like creatures that lived inside a shell, which is what we see fossilized here. We even see a pretty big one of these up near the top of the sand slide, which is awesome. Next to the ammonite, we find a fossil which just looks like seaweed or some other underwater plant. The next fossil we find though is pretty interesting. It looks a lot like a krill, but the fossil actually seems pretty big, so there's a little discrepancy there, but it's interesting to note that it's possible that anglerfish came from here, so that little discrepancy in size may uh, come into play. And that's not the only big fossil we find, we actually find a few fossils that are like that. None of them look exactly like an anglerfish, but I do think that it adds to the evidence a tiny bit that the anglerfish may have originated from here. The long ones even look a lot like centipedes. I don't know what you want to do with that information, but here you go. I've also spotted a few I just can't identify at all. And I may be insane, but I think this one sort of looks like a huge fly. It's really cool that devs added these fossils, but I wish they added no my logs talking about them as well. Sadly, Ash Twin is mostly devoid of natural life. But the Nomai were able to plant things there that were able to survive being under sand for so long. It originally had some plants growing near the core that the Nomai found and replanted, but that makes it hard to know if we even see them at all in the game. But to me, Ember Twin had enough interesting stuff for the both of them. I actually want to take a pit stop over to the Nomai vessel just really quick. The Nomai actually seem to have brought some plant life of their own to our solar system. The plant is pretty unique looking, and they probably qualify as trees, but their trunks sort of look like vines. The bark of the tree is four different colors, and their branches actually have leaves on top of them. Apparently, these plants are pretty sturdy and very adaptable. We find these growing just about everywhere we find the Nomai set up. Next up is Timber Hearth. This place is abundant with life. Right from the spawn, we find trees, bushes, grass, flowers, I mean... You name it. Most of the trees here just look like your run-of-the-mill pine tree, but some of them are so big they remind me of the massive redwood trees found in California. The plant life here is so abundant 
it'd be boring to go through and catalog them all. But with water to spare, an environment full of plant life, this is the perfect place for life of all kinds to flourish. Pretty awesomely, we can find fireflies fluttering about in a few areas. I find this especially neat, because we actually have those where I live. They are just little bugs whose butt light up as they react to oxygen. Wherever I find these things, they are always give off the sense of mystical vibes, at least in video games and movies and such. Timber hearth streams and ponds are also full of life. We can't actually find them swimming around, sadly, but looking around the Harthian village, we find a fisherman, and further exploration reveals fish hanging off the walls. We even find some of them in the baskets full of water. Maybe the Harthians use the crickets we hear in certain areas around the planet as bait for the fish. But the fish we find hanging on the walls vary wildly in colors, suggesting there are many different species. We can also take a look at the Outer Wilds Ventures provisions. In one of the tins, we find a sardine-like fish with four eyes. Well, two on either side, which are actually likely an evolutionary ancestor of the Harthians, who are also, obviously, a life form that came from Timber Hearth. When the Nomai visited Timber Hurt, they found the Harthians just living in one of the ponds. From there, with the absence of any natural predators, we were able to safely evolve into the species we see today. But I'm pretty sure that that's all the life forms that we find here on Timber Hearth, as if that's not enough. Brittle Hollow is up next. Sadly, the mostly crystal-like planet doesn't seem so conducive to life. Not only is the water here mostly frozen, but the moon actually bombards the surface of Brittle Hollow with giant lava blobs which hit the surface in a fiery explosion. But against all odds, life finds a way. We find trees here scattered across the surface of the planet, and awesomely, we are able to find a few unique types of flowers growing here. And we even find an entire grove of trees, and inside that grove, we find some other unique greenery that only likely survives because of the quantum nature of the whole thing. But it's amazing to me that even somewhere like here, with little liquid water, almost no soil, and a moon actively bombarding it with lava, and we still find a few life forms flourishing. Which sort of makes me wonder why I was so surprised by the next one. All my conventional logic told me that no life could exist on Giant's Deep. But touching down on an island, tells me that my logic has no power here. On Gabro's island alone, we find trees, bushes, flowers, and moss growing on the beaches and mountains, I mean everywhere. The trees are pretty tall, with most branches spreading out, then growing up, likely trying to spread out as far as they can and up as much as they can to combat the shade of the mountains. Which leads me to my next question. I wonder if they get all the sun they need when they launch into space or if a certain wavelength of sunlight is able to penetrate through the atmosphere of Giant's Deep. Either way, it's an interesting setup. But of course, the big thing to talk about on Giant's Deep is the jellyfish. They sort of seem right at home here on Giant's Deep. A large planet-wide ocean to swim in, and they have a natural resistance to the electrically charged barrier preventing creatures from entering the core of the planet. But this actually isn't where the jellyfish originate from at all. They actually come from the giant icy planet that used to reside in the orbit that Dark Bramble now inhabits. In the destruction of their home planet, the jellyfish got lucky, and a few of them are swept up by the gravitational pull of Giant's Deep. Which leads us to the last life form that we find on Giant's Deep, and the one that I almost overlooked. The massive coral growing at the center of the planet. Technically, it and the ocean are what's causing the planet's immense gravitational pull. Corals are technically a bunch of tiny animals sort of stuck together and they all sort of act as one. In some places, it branches off like trees and the ding dang thing spans over 300 meters. For comparison, pole to pole, the interloper measures in at about 150 meters, 160 tops. There must be millions of these tiny guys here. How awesome is that? At first glance, Dark Bramble doesn't really seem like it could have life, and if you explored the surface, you wouldn't find any. Unless you consider the whole thing is an interstellar plant. It itself is life. A giant houseplant just floating out here in space. 
I think it's able to survive by shooting out seeds and consuming the plants it infects via dimensional portals. That sort of makes Dark Bramble a perfect place for almost any kind of life to inhabit. We even find evidence of jellyfish here left over from the destruction of the planet that this Bramble infected. So that proves that anything from any of the planets could kind of make its way into Bramble. But in reality, we only find a few different kinds of species inside Bramble. We don't really know where they come from either, but we are able to find some giant anglerfish floating around in the fog. It's sort of hard to believe, but somehow, these things thrive here, even having a huge nest of eggs waiting to hatch. I have a whole video trying to explain the mystery that are anglerfish, so if you want to check that out, you can check it out here. But that's not the only life forms that we find floating around here in Dark Bramble. Apparently, even plants in space aren't able to avoid bugs. This place is practically infested with centipedes. I mean, it makes sense that a plant is able to give a complete ecosystem for a little hundred-legged bugs, but I thought that maybe the zero-g and no oxygen atmosphere would make it hard for them. But, I mean, I guess it makes sense. They probably eat the moss or vines here, and the anglers likely eat the centipedes in turn. It's interesting to me how multiple life forms are able to survive in the dimensional mess that is Dark Bramble, but I suppose what node they are in makes little difference to an angler or centipede. But ultimately, I'm just really glad the developers took the time to inhabit the solar system with so many plants and various creatures. It really makes the whole solar system feel alive. I mean, literally everywhere we go, we find life. I mean, geez, even at the end of the universe, it rains down trees at us in a quantum storm. I hope we find the same thing in real life, minus the quantum storms. We have a, such a wide variety of life here on Earth that tends to survive in such extreme situations. So it would sort of make sense that we may find life in every place it's possible for it to exist. And that would be a lovely solar system to live in, in my opinion. I think that's just about all the biological life forms we find in Outer Wilds, besides the remains of the Nomai, but we really have no idea where they originated from. Be sure to let me know in the comments if I left out any life forms we find in the game. As always, a special thank you to the members here on the channel. We recently hit a milestone of 10 members here and just unlocked another emoji. If you want to become a member here and join the list of amazing people you see above, you can hit the join button below. It's only $2 to join, and it really does help the channel grow. And of course, there are higher tiers that give you a little more perks than just the lower one. But obviously, that's not the only way to support the channel. If you enjoyed the video, you could like or share it, and maybe go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Or, you can give the video an applause, which is a pretty new function. But even watching the video to the end lets YouTube know that my content is worth watching. So for now, this is a Lore Explorer, just sincerely thanking you if you've watched this far through the video. I hope you all have a good day, and I hope to see you in the next video.